All right, you're good to, to hit it, Jenny. Everyone, I'd like to welcome everyone and call the uh, June 13th, 2023 Mill Area Traffic Council Advisory Board meeting to order. Um, there's any uh, introduction, so I'll go around. My name is Jenny Gleason. I'm the chair. Chris Barrett, Grand County Strategic Development Director. Uh, August Grant, Grand County Economic Development Department Director. And then we actually have new staff. Oh. Sky, well, I guess I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay. Yeah. I'm Sky White. Day yeah. two, still here. <laughs> <laughs> To supporting the economic development. Yeah, so she'll be a frontline front administration about everything. And did you come from within the county already? Or I came from a tea company called the Republic of Tea. Okay. Um, I've been a um, partner to the CEO over there for the last 12 years. So I'm up at Pack Creek. We've been there for about four years, but we lost our house during fire and we're just dust on the tail end of rebuilding. So now we're really full time, full time. Well, thank you. My name is Dogs, Assistant Marketing Director for Economic Development. Mary McGann, Grand County Commission. Sharon Kinsley, Board Member. Brian Hunting, Board Member. Lucy Shumway, Board Member. Lori McFarland, Board Member. Mm -hmm. And we want to go in the internet world. Mark, do you want to go next? Yeah, hi, everybody. Mark Stevenette with Love Communications. Good to see you all. Hannah Saunders, Love Communications. And that would leave Adam Whalen, Love Communications, to round out the Love Crew. Nice to see everybody. Yeah. Does Kaylin want to say hi? Yeah, Kaylin. Kaylin Jones, Moab City Council. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Um, so, um, are there any conflicts of interest, disclosures, or expert pay communication agreement? No. Hearing none, going on to any citizens to be heard. Oh, didn't want on Zoom. No one's here. Um, and then presentations are later. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, there's no, yeah, there's no impromptu. Yeah. So we're good to go. Um, and so next go to board member reports. Um, gave about two minutes for everyone to kind of give an update because we haven't done these in a while, giving some time to it. So uh, I'll go first. Red tail. Um, the helicopter was up. Uh, good for us. Not great for Helios, but we're good. Um, and scenic airplane tours um, are down still. So we're about flat with 2019 still. Um, good to see helicopter numbers up. And uh, it's not awesome. It's not bad though. So you were saying the helicopters are up? Yeah. Yeah. What um, that do you mean? Bookings or the oh. literal helicopters physically in the air flying around? Both. Okay. Thankfully. Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, numbers are up. Numbers are up. Okay. And uh, yeah, and then if anyone does not know, um, really exciting news. Hope the official on the 20th, Red Tail got awarded a grant from the Economic Diversification Fund, um, one of four um, and one of 14 total. Um, so Randy did an awesome job. Tammy did an amazing job from the airport. Um, so she was a really big help with that and just kind of helping um, kind of guide that. Um, and the whole discussion about the airline and just that it's not just Grand County, talked about before, it's lots of other counties and Red Tail might even help out Vernal because Vernal's losing their EAS as well as Secret City. So mm -hmm. hopefully an opportunity for Red Tail um, to help out them, but we're going to start doing service to Salt Lake once um, SkyWest pulls out. In October, October 1st, they're gonna pull out. Knock on wood. And uh, hi. Um, and yeah, we're gonna do Tuesday, Thursday. So it's gonna be official June 20th, the time. June 20th? Yeah, the commission meeting. Um, oh, yeah. When you guys officially voted to go on into beautiful land. And so that's really exciting. We got a newcomer. In hi. Um, hi, I'm Alex Borchewski, uh, board member. Um, I can go maybe after all the. Well, I have a yeah. small report. Um, sure. We got the sales tax collections in for March. 
and transient limb tax uh, came in six six percent above 2022, which was surprising to me because uh, anecdote you know indicated otherwise in February was way down. So I was a bit surprised to see TRT come in six percent above 2022. So that's good. That's good. And all the other sales taxes were similarly up about you know between four and six percent. So the sales tax is up too. Yeah. For the quarter? Or For just the month the, of March. What is our quarter look like? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I guess I can calculate the quarter. Um, I haven't done it yet, but January and March were um, above, all combined were above um, 2022, but February was way below. So I'll have to crunch the numbers on the quarter. But um, I don't know how that, that will shake out. I think February might drag it down. Relative to 2022. Yeah, that's just the first quarter. But, you know, January and February are pretty small amounts of money. So as, you know, March onward starts to get considerably more money coming in. The percentage is getting more. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I won't talk about things that we're going to talk about today. Um, but uh, things that aren't on the agenda that I think are relevant and stuff going on in our department. Um, I'll start with um, kind of film commission stuff. So uh, we've been working um, through a process um, with the county commission to consider uh, an opportunity to basically move the film commission outside of our department to a you know, nonprofit entity um, that we would continue to fund, have oversight of, um, and get value, ensure that we're getting value um, from the film commission, but it would also potentially open up um, other funding sources for the film commission operations um, and put the film commission in kind of a more of a, a less governmental structure, I guess would be the way to put it. Um, and so we did a, a, a lot to really kind of move that forward. In the last month, we had a, um, a public forum meeting over at the MARC um, back in May um, and had you know, I think there's a lot of conversation kind of in whispers about what was going on and what was good and what was bad. And so that was an opportunity for folks involved, including myself and Viga and Brian and Derek from the Film Commission um, and others to speak to kind of what was on the table or what wasn't on the table because nothing was on the table yet, but what was being potentially considered. Um, got a lot of support from that conversation and also a lot of really good nuanced input from the public. And I thought that meeting went really well. Um, that information was passed along to the county commission, who at their last meeting um, agreed upon a scope of work for that kind of a potential arrangement, and then um, has directed, affirmatively directed staff to develop a contract um, between the county and the Red Cliffs Foundation, the nonprofit uh, that was just recently born. Um, and so that's moving forward, but no affirmative decision has been made one way or the other um, at this point. Um, so that's that's kind of going on in the film world. B is obviously very busy, and there's a lot of activity going on. Horizon is in town shooting. There's a lot of other projects. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there. We could ask questions about that all day, unless there's like a super, super, super burning question. I'm going to move on. Okay, Lacey. I kind of have one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I've been getting the question. Was yeah. there a discussion, and I'm sorry I missed the meeting, was there a discussion about an RFP to, or to allow like other people to apply for that opportunity or is it just a I don't I had that question I don't know how to answer there's there's been discussion of an RFP not really with the commission but definitely a way to go okay. and it's not off the table yet either that okay. would have to kind of be up to the county to decide if they wanted to do that that wasn't okay. what the county motioned to do right if that makes sense yeah. so I mean I Think that if, if folks feel like an RFP process should happen, talk to your county commissioner would be my uh, take on that. Well, um, technically, we are supposed to according to our purchase policy. But, okay. Yeah, so I mean, it's kind of a, a gray area, I guess. I mean, it's right. sort of sort of like uh, I guess we're paying for services, so yeah. I mean, our purchasing policy says anything over fifty thousand has to go out right. of bid. Yeah. So is it going to an RFP right now? No. Right. Could it? Yes. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> how is that going to happen if you want to have a package? Would be how I would answer that question. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. 
Good question. It's a little different because we're not we're we're continuing to pay for the services we're getting now. It's just going to be in a different place. Yeah. So it's well, kind again, of I don't want to dive into this too much. Too. Big yeah. agenda. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean we can all. I mean, but it's a good uh, point. I'll, I'll take it. If the commission asks me, I'll give my opinion. But otherwise, I'll just stay quiet. Okay, <laughs> sounds good, Chris. <laughs> um, the good stuff happens, Chris. Come yeah, on. yeah. So, so that's film. Um, and then kind of have last call for economic diversification funds um, at the next county commission meeting. Um, there is kind of two big buckets that's going towards that. Um, one is, is, you know, we calculate, Chris and I calculated um, balance of funds that have been collected and will be collected, um, counted against expenditures and liabilities um, and, and reserves to figure out how much you know, money is available to be spent before the, the eligible use for that change is on July 1st uh, as a result of the new state law. And so uh, we've been kind of working at nuclear speed to try to um, create a good funding proposal for the balance of those funds, uh, try to do a public process, we did a survey, we had a, the economic development board meeting met and considered a handful of proposals um, they made a recommendation that amount went to the county commission. The county commission um, made a recommendation, asked me to go take that recommendation and turn it into contracts and bring it back to the county commission at the next meeting, which will be next next Tuesday. So uh, that looks like an additional hundred thousand dollars towards the USU Moab um, senior business consultant role that we stood up to try to kind of lengthen the sustainability of that role. Um, it includes um, funding the balance of the Career and Technical Education Student Career and Success Center that's being proposed by the school district to be put in at the Community Resource Center, former USU Moab campus, um, for $221,500, Red Tail Charter Service to Salt Lake project for $95,000, and then the balance, which is going to be a little less than $400,000, towards one of two basically small business capital funds. Um, one that would be operated by the Southeast Utah Association of Local Governments. That's basically a revolving loan fund. We put in capital. It sits there and it gets paid up. It gets paid in. It gets paid out. It continues to circulate and serve the community. Um, the other option is going towards the Utah Microloan Fund, which would basically use that funds as first loss capital and then go fundraise from the private market to get more than that um, to be in a larger pool for the community. So I'm you know working really quickly. Um, to try to develop executable agreements that the county commission can consider in their next meeting. Um, and then the last piece is that the selection committee for the strategic planning um, RFP uh, went through a long and extensive and hardworking process. Chris and Jenny were both on that um, and made a recommendation or selected a proposal that I have working with the proposee to turn to a contract and bring to the county commission meeting uh, that next week uh, for their consideration for that process. What is, what is that about? So that's the, we talked about this, I think two meetings ago, kind of a holistic strategic planning process to try to answer some of these tough questions around, you know, where are we going with tourism? Where are we going with economic diversification? And start the new paradigm now that this, these laws are changing and economic diversification from TRT is no longer going to be an option. There's been a lot of conversation during during that legislative process about what is our plan. Um, and we've had various planning processes, but we don't we haven't had a broad-based community engagement exercise where we're asking the community, we're talking to subject matter experts, and we're trying to understand what does the next five years look like for Moab's economy regardless of if it's a tourism project or you know, um, based on entrepreneurial exercise. So I'm really excited about it. It's definitely big and weighty, and um, I think there are a lot of good questions to be had. Um, and I think the folks on that committee, which also included Melissa Jeffers from the Economic Development Board and Bill Winfield from the commission, all felt very strongly in the, in, in the vendor that we we're recommending the commission consider. So um, looking forward to diving more into that as time goes on. Um, but those are kind of my big updates besides what we're gonna talk about today. And Sky, super soon.
And this might be for citizens to be heard. Right. That's the question. When we're yeah, developing those um, contracts, yeah. I can't think of a better way to invest than in education in our community. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that there's an accountability piece that we can really look at what's going well so we can roll with what's going well and then look at what's not working. Sometimes I think we sort of get so busy moving the money forward we forget to look to see how it got spent. For sure. I would propose that that might want to be part of it. Yeah. yeah, for every con grant contract we spent this year, they all have a reporting requirement. Nice. Um, for these ones, you know, they're coming from funding that isn't going to exist in the future. And so it is one-time funding, although we obviously want to get reports back on impact and that it actually got spent on what it was supposed to be spent on. So those, those will be the grant contract for sure. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Oh, I'm on. Sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, I attended a time entry update meeting with the Park Service. Um, see how things were going this year. Um, it's going well, even along you know the lines of our store out there is going well. Cool. Um, it doesn't seem like the lines are taking as long to get through. Um, they've streamlined a little bit of how they process things going through the gate. So um, it's better. Um, the issue that they've come up with, because you know they changed from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. 7 and starting the timed entry. Um, Last year, people weren't getting up at five to get in before six. This year, they are getting up before six to get in before seven. Mm. So they have a lot more people in the park before the time reservation starts. So the morning hours, there's less tickets available. Oh, interesting. Um, so um, they're still sitting at a like a 33% no-show rate. Mm. Um, most of that, or the you know the biggest no-show rate is the the. Uh, Three to four hour because that's the last one of the sure yeah that's the insurance reservation yes um, so a lot of you know they're figured a lot of people are getting earlier ones but not canceling at three o'clock one so um, I know it's <clears throat> this year they did they didn't at, when they do them the three month in advance release they're not as releasing as many this year as they did last year and then more are getting released at the six p.m. the night before. And it's really helped us at the MEC um, be able to get people reservations for the next day. And then there's also usually some left over from the night before that we help people in the morning get them for that day. Um, so it's been going really well. We don't have the park rangers in the MEC this year at all, um, but the MEC staff is amazing. Um, I don't know. I, I can't help people on their phones get their stuff done, but my mix staff will just boom, they have them and they have a reservation for those people. So it's been really nice. A lot of foreign visitors. Um, good. Foreign is great. Yeah. So a um, lot of foreign visitors. So that's been really good. Um, and this Thursday, 30 years to make um, the re ribbon cutting. A re ribbon cutting. Doing a re ribbon cutting. Are you? Yes. 3 p.m., right? 3 p.m. Yeah, we'll have some this Thursday. Yeah, cookies and some free postcards and stuff. Three get there five. early enough, huh? Three to five. It's right? just three o'clock. We close at five. Oh, okay. But but we have a lecture at five o'clock um, with um, Chris White. With uh, she's the NASA ambassador, um, so she's going to be talking about the. Um, yeah. Eclipses that are coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's really good. She used to be a park ranger at Dead Horse Point. So she will be there at five. So come get a cookie and a free postcard. And if you're there early enough, there's a night sky magnet. I only have 72 of them. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's about it. Going good. Uh, Reckless had a good May, um, all in all. I mean, we were roughly 10% off of 2022's numbers, but ADR was higher, so dollar-wise, it was about the same. I will say from the star reports that I've seen in Moab, the, for the hotels that are in the survey that I've seen, uh, Moab is roughly around 72% occupancy. Um, year over year, that's down. Um, however, keep in mind also there's about 700 or 
hotel rooms that are in operation year over year. So no surprise that TRT would come about the same amount of money. Um, but basically, I think that everybody's seeing what we're solving in the market. Um, we did have two really good meetings with groups that are interested in coming to Moab. One is the John Wayne Foundation, uh, which does uh, five uh, charity trail runs um, in various locations that John Wayne has filmed in. They have always wanted to do one in Moab, but have not had much success in getting one up and running. Um, so they are targeting early summer, which is a new period for us at least. And it would be good if they come out here late June or early July, which is kind of what they're looking at. So they are heavily interested in that. So that would be, uh, traditionally they pulled about 600 actual runners for their races, but they have a, a week long of activities and they bring the entire John Wayne family in and they do a whole bunch of uh, community-based events and stuff like that. So I'm sure that they will probably start reaching out to people here. Um, and then something, I was hoping Vega was gonna be here, uh, but it, just something I'm gonna put on everybody's radar. Uh, I think everybody's aware that uh, Washington County kind of had the the rules changed for the film incentive tax. They qualified as a rural community. Uh, so their film commissioner uh, came out last week to visit the Horizon set uh, and came bearing a whole bunch of gifts, uh, among them $3 million um, to the film, as well as um, a promise of building them a studio in Washington County. So make no bones about it. They are 100% trying to steal the next four movies <laughs> um, away from Grand County. Um, and uh, if that doesn't concern people, it should, because I think everybody saw the numbers for Horizon for their first film that were directly spent in Grand County, and that was a significant amount of money. So, so, the so they actually stuff. came here to try to steal the movie away from them? Yeah. That's great. The audacity. <laughs> so the, the county taxes are going to pay for the studio? Well, apparently, from what I understand, I don't know where they got the money from, but they basically approached the, the Costner organization and said, we're willing to donate $3 million to fund your movie. On top of building a studio. On top of getting the state legislature yeah. to change the rules. That are exactly. In the so, area. Hardball. It's big money, though. So. I mean, I'm not, not going to lack a player for playing, but <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. Um, Chamber, we've just kind of been doing our own internal stuff for a little bit. We did go on a DC trip, came with us, um, which was really good. We went with our representatives and they're just kind of leave with their staff. And um, I got to go with UTIA as well. They were out there for their own flyback, and I got to go with them and meet up with Vicki and of those people so uh, so that was really good and then we three ribbon cutting is on my list to share as well <laughs> we just finished up our golf tournament which was really good for the and gave away our scholarships for the seniors and all of that um coming up we um we have a new office assistant so we are just kind of we're kind of doing some revamping with the office and that's what our what our focus is right now um as far as businesses go i'm hearing a lot of i Feel like a lot of mixed reviews like so i'm just kind of waiting to see numbers and whatnot but a lot of concern over the beginning of the of the year being slow and then some some reports that it's it's going up and i mean i just we'll we'll see i guess <laughs> grateful to have been able to be invited to uh, washington dc i feel like those relationships are really important to our community and um the outreach there was uh, Beneficial, I think, the UTIA opportunities to be with Vicki Varela and Natalie Randall were really appreciative. Appreciated. Um, I feel like the state and southeastern Utah working together can bring uh, more working together than having the opposite. Um, Sales uh, for Memorial Day were good for us. Uh, we're pedaling fast and trying to catch up because the beginning of the year was really soft. Uh, pretty similar for us at the restaurants. Yeah, we had uh, 
it was a slower start in March and April, but it really picked up in May for us, and especially Memorial Day weekend. Since then, it's definitely turned the corner uh, down. Yeah, probably twenty percent since Memorial Day, and like since May. So our weeks here, yeah, last week was way slower than all of, all of them in May. So yeah, trying to figure out how to work our schedule out and trim some yeah trim costs from the labor and. Uh, Keep our fingers crossed. I mean, we've definitely had some good days, but it's it's really it's more a lot more hit and miss now, where you get some like really busy lunch or a busy dinner, but then in between is kind of slow. So you've got to keep your staff going and like be ready for those big big pops. But then in the meantime, you kind of have to twiddle your thumbs. Yeah. So uh, you know, just uh, we've had some really good businesses here. Uh, I'm not really complaining too much. Uh, we've increased prices a little bit to try to catch up with our, yeah, just the, the inflation, still kind of keep, trying to keep catch up with that and labor costs. Um, food costs are definitely up, uh, just certain items like American cheese, <laughs> <laughs> like more expensive than meat. I don't know how that is, but, <laughs> but, uh, and, and some things, but, uh, it, it's not been too bad and, uh, we've got, one more months, we're gonna cruise through June and July. We'll be closed for our for August. I think uh, last in years past we've been closed for July because that's been a bit of a slower time. But last August was like really slow, really difficult for the staff to get through uh, and manage and definitely making money in August. So this year we shifted to close in August and. Uh, yeah, kind of just get ready for fall, good fall season. So I think fall will be really good. Um, I think generally the summer, I think we, and with the weather continuing to be like it is, I think we will see some decent numbers for the summer. I think we'll see some regional visitors, the river being up and, you know, mountains. So that's all, all good things. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. I don't have anything else. All right. Great. Um, thanks, everyone. Next up, love communication update. Hey, Adam, I think you're the most likely to be brief of all of these presentations. So, <laughs> in minutes. Time. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd be the most brief. <laughs> I can both talk fast and I also don't have too much to cover. So yes, let me, uh, I'll share my screen here. So I believe it's just a general data update, right? Timelines um, is what you guys want me to cover, right? Yeah, so I guess um, for the board's sake, um, at the last meeting, <clears throat> y'all voted to recommend to the county commission to um, take on uh, or consider the kind of the premium version of the data package um, that Adam presented. So the county commission approved that and Adam's going to provide an implementation timeline um, so that we have an idea of expectations as to when, you know, our office will start seeing numbers, um, reports will be starting to be distributed on a regular basis, and when an uh, you know, evergreen always on external dashboard will be um, live, Adam, if you want to. Yeah, could you give me a screen sharing permission real quick? Cool. Oops. Um, all right, you should be there. We go. Good to go. Cool. You guys just seen an Excel sheet? Yes. Cool. So I'm going to go a little behind the scenes real quick before I talk through this timeline. But like August mentioned, we've been basically kicking everything off. Um, and behind the scenes, we're keeping kind of a full status grid on onboarding all of the data sources we said we would onboard. But for you guys, I just kind of baked it down into a pretty simple timeline. And then this little box here, and I can zoom in if needed, is basically our key deadlines to the deliverables that August just mentioned. So at the start of this month, we basically began notifying vendors who we've selected, not selected, sending out emails and whatever it might be and getting all of our contracts finalized and our data pipelines established. So this kind of Gantt chart you're seeing at the top walks through some more nitty gritty uh, details of when things are going to begin, but you can really boil it down into kind of three key deadlines that are broken down at a monthly level. So we're aiming to have all of our internal dashboards that Love and August's team will be using just kind of regularly to check in on things uh, next month. 
So we already have one data vendor, Placer AI, which is the mobile event tracking, live, good to go. We have an onboarding call um, this week or next with them. And then additionally, this week, we're having our kickoff call with the main dashboard company in Symphony. So the tourism economics product that we basically signed on to use. So we're anticipating that will take around four to six weeks, which would put us in line to be able to start providing data, pulling information from dashboards sometime next month, probably middle of the month if we're being a little more conservative, which is what I would guess. And then ultimately what that will look like is we will start putting together those monthly reports for the board in August of 2023. So just in two months from now. So what that will be is that will be uh, the love team in coordination with, you know, pretty much what questions we want to ask, what we want to look like, putting together more consolidated kind of like PowerPoint decks of the trends we're seeing. So, you know, not everyone has to jump into the dashboards or it's just all of this ethereal data, kind of trying to put it into some cohesive stories and trends. The last piece that was mentioned is the public dashboard, where folks will be able to go to the Grand County website and access the event data, the mobile tracking data, um, the lodging data, whatever it might be. That's tentatively slated for September of 2023. So the whole idea of sequencing it this way is we're basically going to, you know, next month, make sure all the data is being accurately flowed into where we can access it, make sure that we feel comfortable with what it looks like then introduce those kind of reports that can be distributed in August. And then in September, kind of do an assessment on what types of data sources and information we would want available to the public for access, for exporting, whatever it might be. So that's the loose timeline. Like I said, it would be brief. I can stop sharing real quick, but I will give one more quick update that we have signed all contracts. So contractually, we're pretty much ready to go with the exception of lodging data is the main one. Um, but we are looking uh, good. All things are on track with our original timeline and scope. And realistically, you guys should start seeing kind of the fruits of this labor towards the end of next month, maybe middle of next month. But then really in August is when a lot of these numbers will be regularly presented and provided. Any questions or clarification I can provide? I know that was pretty high level. That was good. Sounds good to me. Cool. Man, that was the easiest presentation of my entire life. Sweet, thanks, guys. I, I yeah, I, there wasn't a burning question on it. I just, I just got questions from. I wanted to follow up on that as that is something that the board did approve at their last meeting and wanted to make sure that there's clarity as to next steps. Um, but yeah, do y'all want to move on to the next? Um, yeah. Section. Yep. Yeah, so that's me. So I'm gonna high level again walk through the executive summary of the fly campaign. So I believe the attached on the agenda is the full report. Again, we don't have time to go over the entire thing, um, but we're really excited about the results that we are seeing. Um, again, as a reminder, this was our big campaign that started in October all the way through March. Um, and we really leveraged connected TV, so finding our audiences on a large living room screen, programmatic video and display. We had pay-per-click, so again, as we uh, create that awareness and bring people through the funnel and they're, they're searching specific terms, we're, we're, we're driving that narrative to key landing pages. And so altogether, we were looking at around an $850,000 media buy, and I'm really happy to see the return on ad spend of about $10 per $1 spent. Um, and the next slide will kind of show what that overall revenue to Moab is. But again, the way that we attach our media attribution to hotel revenue is obviously a DARA impact. Again, it's going to be really great with Adam's robust data so that we can get all of the different information. It can really help our, our markets and our media be more robust. But as we're looking at this impact, again, we drove and influenced about 18,000 hotel bookings. You know, just some highlights. Again, TripAdvisor was our main OTA, and we saw that they drove a um, an audience that was spending a little bit more than the other um uh, you know, partners. And so about an $18 higher ADR. Again, when we look at Sojourn, we were really promoting, um, you know, targeting these main key markets for fly. So again, we were looking at Chicago, LA, um, and Salt Lake and Denver, really promoting the, those uh, flights into Moab. And so we were able to influence over, you know, 1,200 flights directly into those airports. Again, confirmed travelers was around 3,000 just for that programmatic partner. 
And again, you know, when we look just at, you know, Sojourn, they have those travel trends that they're able to optimize towards. Their return on ad spend was a little bit higher than the overall campaign around $12 per $1 spent. Again, when we look at Connected TV, we were able to reach 3.8 million households. So that's just under 2 million uh, video completions with our beautiful video spots. And again, I think video visuals is definitely the, the big driver when it comes to pre-roll and Connected TV for action and inspiration. And then lastly, for pay-per-click, you know, we were super efficient with converting those um, audiences at around a 20 um, percent CTR and really driving efficiency for those costs around 37 cents. So what that means when we look at, you know, ho the hotel impact is again around 18,600 hotel bookings, um, $8.4 million back. Um, so again, we're looking at that about $10 to $1 spent. The average ADR is around 217. And again, we're always looking at impact in order for us to understanding the difference of the hotel uh, booking window from search to arrival so that we're able to continue and, and influence those audiences. Um, so again, it's a very helpful tool looking forward. And the last thing that we'll just kind of highlight again, so we felt like this campaign, even though it leveraged, you know, a lot of the different awareness to consideration, um, you know, channels like connected TV and pre-roll, we still were able to drive a really strong return on ad spend. Again, making sure that this traveler spends more. Um, you know, we were looking at a really strong pre-roll um, driving ad exposed website visits. Something that's really important for Connected TV as well is that we're able to attribute what's website visitation. So we're looking at people who saw your ad on a Connected TV advice when they're when they're streaming, and if they went to your website and that lift between controlled and exposed. And so we're driving again that reach a channel all the way to the website into visitation. So our future recommendations is to continue, you know, leveraging connected TV or video where we can, where that budget allows us to tie back to hotel bookings. And I can to, to continue to leverage Adara Impact just so we're able to connect the dots of all of our paid advertising. One thing that I will note is that um, for the fly campaign, our display post impression rate, again, when someone doesn't see, doesn't click on an ad, but they still go to your website. We are seeing really stronger PIR with our time entry and even our summer campaigns. So we're going to take, you know, kind of those creative optimizations and, and we're obviously consistently learning and adapting in market from campaign to campaign. So we've already seen some really good success with our time entry, which I'm sure we'll share with you um, on the next meeting. That was really high level. Do you have any questions on that? Again, we're really excited about those results. And if you guys dive into the longer report and have any questions, I'm happy to address those. Can I ask a question? Please. Um, I, I read in one of those in the target audience that we're um, targeting activity um, driven planning, something like that. And that sometimes that tends to be bigger groups and families. I'm curious if that does that specifically target families or just anyone who's activity driven and it happens to be a majority of families? Great question. And so we don't have um, a specific persona that's just families. To your point, families naturally are wrapped in into the activity driven planner. Um, and so what we're able to see an impact is the party size. Um, and it doesn't specifically say families. Um, but we can dive in and bring up that detail to see if we drove a bigger uh, party size. Um, again, that's more wrapped up into the adventure traveler. So we don't have a specific uh, persona as families. Right. I can mention, though, that we were seeing um, adults 40 to 49 converting the most. Um, so, again, that's a little bit um about two years millennials, and then it shifts to the other generation. Um, so you would think that families would, would fall within that, that scope. Older children have ICP. Okay. And I guess maybe at some point in the future, I'm just wondering if there's some kind of strategy in attracting families, um, you know, as residents. A lot of people that you hear are like, oh, I came to visit and I loved it, so I wanted to stay. And I feel like economic department wise we're like in need of families to move in mm. and so maybe we could you know merge those strategies a little bit mm. I think it's a to be had during that planning process yeah, yeah to dodge their car <laughs> um, 
<laughs> That's the story of the nightmare. You know, car broke down and I never. Well, we never <laughs> right, exactly. But yeah, just some just some cooperative drive business strategy there. Like, small the garages and just yeah, employ the kids to go break cars. Sorry, <laughs> good point. Good, good, well taken. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I believe the next agenda item is co-op. I'm not sure, August, if you want to set that up before I kind of present our strategy. Um, yeah, unless there's any other questions on either the data piece or the, the FAST campaign that we're reporting on today. Do we have any comparison from previous year pilot time entry to this year pilot time entry to see if we're having people be more interested and responsive and clicking on that, do we? Do we mm. Well, the, this year's campaign programs? I don't think is over yet, uh, so we don't have. Is that right? Our current year is not over yet, so we don't have a final report. Yep, it's wrapping up, and so we still have that attribution window. So I believe next month we'll be able to compare. Um, and again, our time entry campaign was a little bit less in budget, so what we'll be looking at is kind of like rates to compare apples to apples. So, yes, at a later meeting. Okay. Yes. <laughs> is that right? Correct. Yep. And then for reference, uh, this board doesn't meet in July unless you elect to, which you Got could it. elect to. But um, <laughs> so that would happen at the August meeting. Unless you decide to have a meeting in July. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's go to co-op. So um, we talked about that. We've been talking about this. Um, the Cooperative Marketing Grant Program is uh, run by the State Office of Tourism, funded by the state legislature, um, and provides an opportunity for the state to advance its tourism goals um, by supporting communities, by letting communities kind of drive what the projects they would like to do. It's a one-to-one -one match, um, and the max you can request is $250,000. Um, and uh, we typically go for the max. So, so kind of the important things to keep in mind is that <clears throat> um, there's there's limits on how much we can spend in state on this program uh, in terms of actual markets and audiences that we're reaching out to, um, and um, uh, there's also kind of new rules about bringing in that forever mighty message is kind of relatively new in the last couple of years. And then um, kind of from the county's planning standpoint, basically this is additional money coming in on um, that more or less increase the total budget. And so if there's a project that we want to have happen and we're, you know, we're eating up $250,000 of, of our intentional or intended marketing spend next year, if we get this grant money, that 250000 can be spent on a different project, if that makes sense. So, you know, by getting the most money out of this possible, it, it allows us to be flexible with the dollars that we have that aren't tied to one program or another. So, you know, our department sees very strongly that going after the most out of money from this is, is a net good for a department. Um, and that with that in mind, last conversation we had was, um, you know, kind of with regards to this conversation of should we kind of aim for a more traditional marketing oriented um, plan or kind of a more kind of media educational um, campaign. Um, and so in, in looking at how the state office of tourism kind of and the board, what they what they want to get out of this program and what they funded the most, you know, we want to go towards a basically helping to fund next year's version of the summer marketing campaign that we're doing this year. Um, and so that's what we've asked um, Love to scope out as a project to be funded. So that's not to say this is the only you know, ad campaign. It's not to say it's the only piece of media. It's not to say it's the only, you know, that we're not going to do any responsible recreation, but that this is, we think, the most viable um, container to get the most amount of money um, to get the most benefit for the community within this program. Um, so it's due on our end by June 30th. Um, and we need letters of support from this board. We need a commitment from the county for the match money. So that'll be coming up at their at their next meeting. Um, and so what Love has prepared is kind of the bulk of what's actually what we'd like to put into an application, um, but it's not concrete. So if there's any input or revisions, um, this would be the time to, to, to do that. Um, mm -hmm. 
we were hoping to draft a letter of support, um, and I'm realizing did not do that in time for this. So the the action item for today um, would be you know ratifying voting on a letter of support because there's no actual letter. Um, we have to use some kind of a language like you know, a letter that the chair of the board will draft on behalf of the board. But we, so long as it is you know what we see and we like today, we trust Jenny to write that. And we officially vote on it now would be the end of this agenda item. Mm -hmm. Before we dive into it, just kind of contextually, that all makes sense. I just want to make sure we know yeah. what playing field we're about to go do some sports on. That's a bad metaphor. <laughs> um, okay, Hannah, I want to pass it off to you then. Okay, great. And so again, we've um, obviously been collaborating with August, Melissa, and Robert, and just trying to identify some of the challenges um, that are maybe softening our market and, and how we can react and, and um, obviously turn those challenges into opportunities. And so just wanted to kind of set the stage with all the kind of uh, challenges that we are looking at that will drive the strategy. And so again, um, obviously some ne uh, negative economic impacts on travel. We obviously know that gas prices are spiking specifically in the summertime. We're seeing that with our travel trends currently. Um, so assuming that will continue next year and then just obviously some you know, travel issues in general with with um, flights. We also know that um, even though we uh, have been very strategic and, uh, you know, uh, flexible with what markets we've been speaking to, just like we did with the fly and drive campaigns. Uh, we want to continue to make sure that we are speaking to our regional feeder markets and our, you know, some select longer distant markets. The rationale for that is that we see that even though the regional feeder markets happen to be kind of the, the top markets for you guys, they tend to have lower ADRs. And so we want to make sure that we're balancing the quality of uh, the quality with quantity. We also know that with the SkyWest flights um, that, that were going uh, from Salt Lake and Denver into Moab are going to be reduced or eliminated. Um, obviously, this is based on market adjustments by national airlines, nothing that we can do about it. We want to understand where we can kind of focus on, um, you know, elevating how you can get to Moab. And so obviously there's those connectors now from Phoenix. So how do we kind of pivot and announce the, the different ways to travel to Moab? On the side of domestic, we obviously know that international recovery isn't, um, you know, quite where it should be. We are anticipating that uh, it'll, it'll come into a closer recovery in 2026. It's great to hear that we saw some international, you know, plates um, and, and travelers so far. That's, that's really strong, obviously, in the summer months historically. Um, you know, the, the top markets that we pulled for 2019 for, for two quarters were uh, Germany, France, UK. And so uh, we're going to be in Canada, of course, is number one. And so we are looking to have um, a little bit of a carve out for international being very, very strategic on an OTA partner. And we're going to we're going to get to that as well. Lastly, we obviously know that time entry has showed us and, um, you know, that's where we've spurred our summer campaign that we currently have live, that there has been a slowed down visitation between July and Labor Day. And so, again, this is a summer strategy for 2024 to really, really focus on what we're calling this new shoulder uh, season to push activity. Um, the reason why we're calling it shoulder season, again, you could you could argue that you know, December through February shoulder season, but within the co-op application, they do get um, added points if you're kind of focusing on a shoulder season. So how do we turn these challenges into opportunities? Obviously we wanna to continue to leverage all of the market insights that we've gained throughout, you know, the last 12 months of our programmatic display and video, our, our OTA and our native storytelling, you know, really, really being able to find the right people in the right state of mind and telling that story uh, through visual content. Um, this is where we will be able to drive the greatest return on ad spend in the short term from regional and longer distant markets. And then to complement that, we'll obviously have um, a very competitive and digitally targeted international campaign for that little bit of a longer uh, tail traveler. The way that we will measure, you know, this, this uh, media attribution to lower funnel results is continuing our partnership with Adara Impact um, this will allow us also to really be able to be flexible and pivot between regional and those East Coast markets uh, using those real-time travel signals. We never, you know, we never set and forget. We're always looking at the data and figuring out where we need to be in order to drive our goals. 
you know, digital is a wonderful platform, but we also know that there's a lot of uh, opportunity within, you know, the real world. And so we want to complement our digital efficiencies uh, with some programmatic at-a-home placements, specifically in some theater airports. So we're looking at Philadelphia, Atlanta, Chicago. Again, we don't have the specifics here because our uh, director of legacy is reaching out to RFP what's available um, and, and what that, you know, commitment will be. This will not be, you know, a a six month uh, long uh, specific flight for at a home. We wanna be really strategic and when we want to announce um, you know, the, the flights into Phoenix or, or just Moab in general. And so we're looking at if we can leverage kind of programmatic at a home. And what that means is that instead of having just one board above the baggage claim and one airport terminal, we're able to use multiple video um, assets across multiple screens, um, announcing it so that we have that more efficiency. So we're looking into that as a complement to this co-op application. So where does that take us? So we're going to kind of highlight, obviously, the main objective, the, the why behind this. So again, bringing all those challenges into the forefront, we want to obviously make sure that we are are loud and proud with Moab, with our specific audiences being very strategic and, and convincing and influencing that Moab is the destination. Of course, people are being, being very selective on how many trips they're taking and what that destination is. Um, and so through compelling visual storytelling, we want to highlight obviously the landscapes, the cultures, the attractions, the outdoor activities, and the benefit of connecting to nature. We saw how, how important that was during COVID. And our, our overall objective, right, is to get heads in beds, but we have to do it strategically through all these different mediums, obviously being aware of those challenges. With that, if we, you know, obviously we're going after the full match. Um, so we want to be really, really strategic in our market focus. Again, with majority of it going to digital, uh, we want to make sure that we're not casting the, the, the net too wide, um, but we also want to understand, um, you know, the difference between regional opportunities and fly markets. So we're looking at allocating about 35% of the budget to kind of those regional, a little bit of that will be in state, as August mentioned, we have a little bit that can go to Salt Lake as obviously the number one market. But we're looking at uh, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix, Denver, San Fran, LA, and Salt Lake. Um, again, where we're getting these markets is looking at Adara Impact. All of these markets, feeder and regional, are in our top 10. We also are looking at, uh, you know, visa review, um, all, of, all the data that obviously um, Adam and his team are, are aggregating. We're using all of this to make sure that we're, we're very selective in the markets that we're going to go after. International, we're going to, um, you know, leverage around 100,000, specifically with TripAdvisor. And, and the re reason why we're doing this is that we can be very, very specific in what search terms, what key pages um, these international audiences are looking at. So 100,000 can go a long way when we're doing very specific matching. So we're looking at active travelers. We're looking at, say, Western National Parks, competitive destination, Utah content. Um, the main markets that we're selecting for this is Mexico, specific Western Canada cities, UK, Germany, and France. Any questions? I want to make sure that we're addressing them as we go, or we can kind of take a moment after. Okay. I think we're just getting... Uh, sidebar feedback that those are good international markets. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, well, we're working obviously closely with Melissa. I should I should note that for Utah Office of Tourism, I place all the international for them. And so we're able to kind of piggyback and overlap those strategies. And we'll kind of allude to that when we get to those slides. Um, again, the audiences are, are really our, our backbone audiences. You know, with travel trends, we're seeing that obviously the older generations are a little bit more insulated when it comes to negative economic impacts for, for obvious reasons. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're not losing out on anyone just because of, you know, the age brackets that we put on it. We really look at real-time behavioral search signals, um, origin markets, what they're looking for. Um, so when we're looking at empty nesters versus activity-driven planners, we are really covering kind of the older generations, uh, as well as those families um, and those millennials that are, you know, those adventure activities that might get those guides, 
that might be able to stay to, to spend a longer time frame that are also leaving a minimum impact on the environment. So we, we feel really good about covering our bases here. And then one thing that we always look at is just those real-time summer travel uh, intenders. If someone is looking at you know, a, a, a destination that's similar to Moab or just Salt Lake City, how can we convince them to tack on a couple of days to come down to Moab? Um, the same thing with our out-of-home messaging. Obviously, those are real-time travelers in that state of mind. And so we'll make sure that we're scheduling those announcements, you know, where it makes the most sense. And we do have a, a tentative flow chart so we can kind of put pen to paper um, so you can kind of see what this full strategy looks like. When it comes to domestic, of course, we're going to look at a combination of tactics. Right now, we're looking at a timing about May to August. Again, we're always looking at, you know, from the consumer standpoint, when they're first searching to when they book to when they arrive. And so we're taking kind of the overall year over year booking window into account so that we make sure that we're on early enough to influence them to pick Moab as a consideration set so that their arrival is hitting the time that we need them the most. So this is going to be um, a market uh, mix of regional and fly with, you know, the bulk of the budget going to obviously this strategy around 300,000. Again, if this is, um, if we get the full match. To complement that, we are looking, as I mentioned, to programmatic out-of-home uh, airport advertising within Philadelphia, Atlanta, Chicago. Obviously, the more that we reach out to these partners to understand the cost, and if they're on the same programmatic network, this might shift. We might have to select one um, market. We might be able to hit all three. The timing, we want to have this overlap, um, you know, so that the, the, the perfect world is that someone sees our digital ad, they go to the airport, they also see our airport ad, right? And so our timing tentatively is April through June with 100,000. To complement our domestic feeder markets, we are going to look at international, again, wanting to overlap um, and piggyback off of U2, uh, U, UOT's timing. So again, we're, we're planning that right now, but we are looking to um, you know, have an international presence on TripAdvisor from January through April. Again, the way that we're able to do this is look at all of these different markets and the people that are looking at specific keywords. And what we've learned with A-B testing, the consumer um, experience, especially with audiences that English isn't their first language, you know, sometimes when you're on TripAdvisor, you click on a banner or you click on a native unit and you pop off of the OTA and you go to a DMO website. We've A-B tested keeping them on the page so that they don't leave, lose that consumer, you know, experience. And we've, we've, we've found that they book at a higher rate, right? I think it's... Um, that, that seems obvious, but sometimes you want, we need to test these things, right? And so our strategy would be to create a landing page on TripAdvisor that acts as kind of this long listicle for international audiences that we're highlighting, you know, the things that really drive them to uh, select a, a destination. And so what we're able to gain there is obviously added page views, added eyeballs, um, you know, added interactions. We're also able to then tie what they did on TripAdvisor when it comes to bookings, as well as impacts. So we get that dual visibility. And I just wanted to kind of highlight, you know, as a as a uh, example of this, um, the last camp uh, campaign that we did for, um, you know, I believe it was the UK. This is the example for Southern Utah. Ten must see places to explore in Utah. Obviously, Moab uh, was one of those places, but we gained around 15,000 page views and people spend an average of five minutes engaging. So they really use this as a tool, an itinerary um, to use once they book and, and while they're booking. Um, and so, again, it's going to be a really, really exciting opportunity for Moab to gain additional page views off of their DMO website and then also having that domestic traffic go to Discover Moab. So it's definitely a two prong approach. Lastly, you know, again, this is where we see um, how we would apply this from, from January through August, right? And so we would start with that international opportunity of awareness and inspiration uh, with those key markets. Um, again, the one thing that might change here a little bit is that programmatic out of home when it comes to, you know, securing what times, but it would be an on and off approach, um, you know, obviously announcing things being flexible with that creative messaging um, in case, you know, a flight goes down or a new flight comes up, again, being really, really flexible with, with those changes. 
And then we are looking to kind of promote that domestic media mix um, from April through August to really, really drive um, that, that summer visitation, knowing that booking windows for you guys can fluctuate from 35 days to 50 days. So we're accounting for that fluidity uh, when we're trying to obviously drive those, those main months of visitation. And that is so far our strategy. Would love to hear thoughts on markets or timing or anything that we might have missed that we can include. Love to hear your thoughts. Or August or Melissa, if you had anything else that I missed. No, I mean, Melissa and I. Yeah, we were together at least. I don't have anything else to add. Yeah, this is not the first draft from our side. So I don't have anything else to add. Okay. All the comments we've made already. So the way we look at things over the last 24 years is where does Jeep Safari land and where does Thelma and Louise land? And it looks like Thelma and Louise is pretty late this year. It's usually third week of March. The, and, the running race. Is that mm -hmm. So however, whomever came up with that strategy, um, good for them because a lot of times people on spring break can't find a place to be or stay if we're so booked up with other activities so spreading those out i look at as somebody's doing a good job somewhere cool. well if everybody loves this that's great and uh then the next next order of business would be to craft a, a creative motion um, that would basically um, and folks are in favor um, <clears throat> vote uh, support uh, a letter of support as written by Jenny, uh, capturing this campaign as as um, described by Love here. And I could also say that if you wanted me to say that more clearly. Uh, okay, so I guess <laughs> let me let me let me make sure I'm capturing what I want to have in that motion. Um, so. I might just write it down really quickly if you give me one second so I don't miss anything. I don't unless unless Jenny can beat me to it. Do you want me to make a motion to volunteer myself? Volunteer yourself to write it? Yeah. Well, you, you can motion. Yeah, sure. You're a board member. Motion whatever you want. I make a motion for the chair of the Travel Council Advisory Board to draft a letter of support for EDD's around 2023 application to the Utah Office of Tourism Club. Oper cooperative marketing grants. Do I have a second? I would, before I would, I would add to that to that motion that not only asking you to do it, but approving that letter specifically. So that letter is supported and approved by the board. Because the, 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 action, the action that you described is go write a letter. But that doesn't mean that. With the support that, of the entire board. Yeah. yeah. With so, approvals. I would, I would specifically say to, to motion to um, approve a letter of support for the grant program as written by board chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that's if that's what people understand, I make a motion to um, get approval for the chair of the Trump Health Advisory Board um, to draft a letter of support for the EDDs round 2023 20, application to the Utah Office of Tourism Cooperative Marketing Grant. I think that'll serve. Okay. Fantastic. I have a motion from Jenny and a second from Alex. Is there any discussion? All right. Um, hearing none, I will call for a uh, vote. Hi, Jenny? Yes. Yeah. Alex? Lori? Yes. Lacey? Yes. So all in favor, no opposed? All in favor? Did you get Kayla? Uh, Kayla's not better than that. Oh. All opposed? None. Good. Good enough. Thank you, Jenny. Ooh, <laughs> um, yeah. So, well, okay, so this the follow up to this before we close this um, mm -hmm. item is that. The more letters of support, the better, mm -hmm. right? So if you own a business and you want to write a letter of support for this grant application, that would be welcome. We'd be happy to write a boilerplate version of that. 
if you know any other folks um, who you think would be supportive of something like this, um, it would go a long way for supporting our application, especially, you know, as, as Brian was indicating earlier, you know, there's, there, there is competition out there amongst, within the state for these various funds and projects. And I think that, you know, it would get, when it comes, when the, when the grant scoring committee comes down to their last little bits and they have to figure out who's going to get shaved off a little bit here and there, you know, if we have a uh, avalanche of letters of support, then we get to those money most likely. So um, we'll probably send out an email blast to our list to, to create an opportunity, but just, you know, y'all are the kind of allies in the ring to help us to get those letters of support. And so we just craft the yeah, and then send it out to our networks. So then that's totally fine. We can, if you want us to do like a boilerplate, we have to write one for the commission anyway, and we can distribute that to y'all and y'all take that from there. Yeah. So something that I anticipate is people asking, like, kind of like, what will the content look like if we have any sort of examples mm -hmm. of either past that we've done like this, or I don't know how far into the process you are or yeah. not, but that's just something I anticipate people cool. wanting to know what it's going to look like. Um, love. I would so I would say we distribute that slide deck we just shared because that'll be what's in the application. And then um if we can get maybe like a one sheeter with the creative that's live for this year's campaign, then that's the most up-to-date creative we have. Yeah. And then people can just the, the creative one sheet for the summer campaign that's currently in motion that you're inferring. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you just add that as an addendum to the slide, just the last slide in the um sure deck for the co-op strategy and just say, you know, example creative from the 2023 summer campaign, and then we can just cap it all in one place. Great. Okay. Would that kind of perfect suit your needs? Okay, great now. Especially because, what did you mention last year, we didn't get the full amount? Yeah, so we requested 225, or excuse me, we requested 250, and we, we got 225. N almost nobody got the 250, but that's what I'm saying, is like, they have to kind of make the numbers work eventually, and, you know, the more the more armor we have, the better um, to make sure we get the max dollars there. Um, and I think it's an opportunity to demonstrate to our community that we, this is something we're doing, and um, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. And you and love present, right? So yes, yeah, so what, what would work is that after this meeting, we then go to the, to the county commission next week and we get a, a letter, you know, a statement of support and commitment to the match, matching part of the TRT. Um, that would go into the 2024 budget. Um, um, and then Melissa and the rest of the staff will work to actually fill out the application on their like Salesforce platform. And then we, all of the applicants who don't like it automatically disqualified um, are invited for interview. Uh, last year I went up and Jonathan from Love and I co-presented and I think that physically going there made a difference. Um, so uh, I would do that again, that will be in July and then we work now since in August. Um, and so that'll line up well with our 2024 budget process so that we can factor grant awards and matches into our budget for next year. Yeah, so that's something very good there. Is it Utah Office of Tourism that will be giving these grants or a subcommittee? Great question. So <clears throat> there's the, so the Utah Office of Tourism facilitates the program to make sure it runs well and everything. But there is a subcommittee of the Utah Tourism Board um, that is the co op, I can't remember what they call it, panel board subcommittee or something like that. And the five people who are on that board are actually in person doing those interviews um, and they make the funding recommendation. Uh, so it's part of the Utah Tourism Board, technically, which has new members. If you saw the ETA newsletter recently, but... watch out for Washington County. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> There's a lot of Washington County on the board. They're really? I, 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 oh, I'm yeah. joking. No, no, okay. seriously. However, Shane Whitworth is on the board, also has property here. Huh. Um, so, you know, he might be St. George adjacent, but he's also female. But anyway. All right. Next. August, August we just send that deck directly to you and you'll distribute. Is that right? Yes, please. Okay. Well, cool. Thank you, guys. I think we have left. Thank you guys. Thanks, you guys. Have a good one. Take care. Or you can stay. <laughs> you can stay if you want. Goodbye. Uh, next up on the agenda is the 2023 CRT budget amendment. So um there's been a couple changes to the to this um 
from what was in the packet. Um, so when this goes into public record, we'll make sure the updated information is in there. I distributed um, the full spreadsheet physically in the room. Here, slide you that one. Um, and then I created just a slide deck. So we're going to go over kind of every account level change. So that is um, this, the, the breakdown that's in here has not only each account, but also the sub projects that go into each account. Because I think that's really useful. It's really hard to understand what's going on without that. Um, those those sub projects don't end up in the final budget software. Um, you can have something called a worksheet, but when it gets reconciled, those disappear. So this is kind of like really more of a planning document. This isn't actually what the budget software is going to look like. Um, but I'm going to go over every change um, from the original 2022 budget, right? So contextually, um, generally, there's a. I mean, do you want to talk about? why we're doing a budget amendment generally. And then I think people are aware of the changes to TRT log, but there's also just- Yeah, so in this case, um, we're taking that second half of the year that would have been diversification uh, funding and moving that over into tourism and promotion. So that looks like right now we're projecting 481,000. Yeah. So Part of this budget amendment is incorporating, that's the main part, is probably incorporating that money into the budget. Maybe you have some other changes too, yep. moving things around as well. But yeah, so there's that's no, it's a kind of a twofold thing. A, there's money that was going to be spent on other things that can no longer be spent on other things that we have to incorporate um, into the budget. And then there's just mid year adjustments that have come up along the way um, that need to just be accounted for. And it makes our lives easier. The budget reflects reality. So I'll go through these. Uh, none of the there's maybe a handful of things that are new, but we've pretty much covered almost all of this at least once. Um, but I just want to make sure that everybody's clear on what's in here. Um, and then you know I'll be taking this. I think ideally we'll get um, um, uh, an action, um, making any comments or otherwise approving this change. So again, so that 481, which is the top line number, is basically what's additional on top of what was previously approved. Um, so I'm just going to go top to bottom. What my version of this I think here. So um, this is super minor. Basically, small overtime costs um, that got paid out. So we want to make sure that that's covered in the budget. Um, we've got, um, and stop me at any time. I think this is the time as we're going through this to, ap after maybe I've explained the change, uh, to answer a question. Um, so any questions on that $7, $8 increase for the overtime line? Seems a little well, steep. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Who authorized that? <laughs> I, I clearly missed it. Yeah. Um, yeah, when you budget no overtime, Chris likes me to not pay overtime. So that's that's totally on me. No, uh, you have to pay it if they weren't. Taking yeah, it. totally true. Um, okay, so under the travel category, a couple changes that add up to two thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Um, adding budget to support a travel council board member. We've talked about having uh, the chair of the board join us at the tourism conference. Um, that's within the statutorily allowable to have TRT cover the travel expenses for board members in this case. Um, uh, we added a budget to, to have, have an extra staff person go to tourism down the hill, which is in January, um, have an additional staff person to attend the outdoor recreation summit, which is in September up in Ogden, um, and then added ESTO to the conference calendar, which is um, a big uh, tourism marketing um, conference. Um, and so uh, Melissa had added this to the request. We actually haven't followed up on this, but I assume you still want to go to that. Yes, I will Great. That. Okay. So those are the four changes, and the and the itemized cost changes are are detailed in your in your packets here. Any questions on on that? Here, none. I'll move on. Um, administrative services. So um, twenty. I guess Chris, can you explain this? This is the this is the amount of money that goes to offset. Um, the audit or accounting costs? Uh, so, um, the general funds provide services like uh, HR, payroll, uh, 
just general administration. And so I do a calculation uh, for FTE, those costs, and then I multiply that cost per FTE by how many FTEs are in the department. And that's how I come up with the number for that. So it's just compensation for what the general, the general fund is providing to economic development. Right. So this basically helps offset making sure that property taxpayers aren't paying for our office's portion of HR accounting. Yeah, HR. yeah it helps keep uh, property taxes down. But also that each department is paying their way. Yeah. I was going to say, is that for just the economic development department, or is that do you do that for other departments? Uh, all those departments that are not in the general fund. Right. So it'd be like roads, um, sand flats, um, active transportation and trails, just any department that's sort of separated out from the general fund. Because gotcha. all those services are paid for in the general fund. Gotcha. And so it's like a transfer just to cover those costs. So what about like the sheriff's office? I'm just curious. In the the, general. Okay. So does the portion that TRT that goes there will be access that as well? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't. If, it, if they're already in the general fund, then I don't worry about it. Gotcha. Okay. It's just for the, the, the departments that are not in the general fund, but are receiving general fund services. Right. Cool. So um, the reason why this is being put into this budget is because it was, there was a, there's a host of um, general office costs that were distributed across um, economic diversification expenditures and kind of tourism expenditures because the HR costs to manage, you know, myself and Ben uh, and uh, Melissa is the same cost. And so just tried to make that equitably split between the two um, departments. But now that spend is doesn't exist anymore. So there's a handful of these that are just general department needs that were budgeted on the other side of the budget that you can come over here, over here to the tourism side of the budget. So that's a good that's an example of that one. Um, any questions about that one before we go? Um, fuel costs. So um, another cost that was baked into the other side of the budget that covers gas or driving the county cars around town to do our business. Any questions there? Yeah. Equipment lease. Um, so this um, is another one. We had the um, our uh, vehicle lease payments on the economic diversification side of the budget. Um, so brought that over into um, this side of the budget. And so that's that's where the twelve thousand dollars comes from. Any questions on that? Did I get the number wrong? What line is that? So so that they should be so that the third number group Thank you. should be out. It should be in descending okay. order. It's all okay. You found it? Yes, thank cool. you. Yep, no worries. Um, professional services, um, a couple of small changes here that are detailed in the, uh, I'm going to stop saying that because detailed everywhere. <laughs> um, increase of $2,560.68. A couple of changes include a small increase in costs for a new email um, manager moving from MailChimp to a platform called Emma. Um, there uh, we had uh, Wander Maps uh, contract cost paid out of this line and we moved $2,000 from a different line item um, that was not going towards anything. It was uh, unanticipated costs um, to come over here. And then there was also an additional um, dollars. Oh, you know, this, this number's by from. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. I don't see it 25, 60 yeah, yeah. anywhere. So, yeah. okay, so there's, a, it, what is it, it's 27, 60? No, 47. I see 47, 60, Oh, you know what? Let me look at this right here. Maybe it adds. No, so what that happened that was. Is that orange? So it's down, it's down 2200. So, so the changes are, since I put it into this slide deck, um, is if you look down on the, the crowd rip contract amount was, oh no, that's the wrong one. The, So has email management is hundred dollars? That's correct. Yeah. So everything that you see on the packet is correct. Oh. So so what's wrong is in the slide deck. Okay. Um. So so the numbers still add up. Basically, this should the one seventy one should be one seven three six eight eight twenty as is in the packet, and the change should be four thousand seven six hundred sixty eight. 
Yeah. Okay. So that was just there was a small change, um, clearly since I wrote that tonight. What is the crowd rift conference? Okay, crowd riff, um is a um, it's basically a platform that allows um, our department to crawl publicly posted images that tag Moab. Um, and it gives us interface to say, hey, person who posted this really great photo that we'd like to use on our whatever, um, you know, like allow us to license this image uh, for our website uh, or whatever. And so it's basically a content generation platform. Um, it's a subscription basis. Um, so I, that just came up for renewal. Um, so that's why there's two costs because the cost structure changed a little bit. Uh, and so we, I spoke with Melissa and Robert about this contract because uh, they use it um, and see if it felt like valuable. Ben, Melissa, do you want to speak to that and how it's useful? And, uh, we were thinking like at the beginning maybe to cancel these, but then when we figured out how much is to pay a photographer, a local photographer to do all the activities. So we feel that this is cheaper. If we divide this in by monthly, so it's super cheap. And the good thing is, I pull uh, pictures or video from real people. It's real content, and I just ask for permission if I can use the picture. And I, when I use on social media, I just make a credit for that 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 person. So it's it's really fun. Uh, we, we really like it. You can pull a lot of pictures. Just so what it works is crown reef selected by a GPS, all the people that are in more. And they upload the pictures on Instagram, Facebook, and then I ask for permission to use that. So. What's your success rate in your requesting and where do we see those postings? Um, on our social media, we use on our social media also on advertising with uh, love communication. They use our picture. Um, the successful is probably like 50%. Not everybody says yes. But we have a 50% that is this, this, this. And I think that Crown Reef, because we, they were pulling pictures that wasn't accurate with Moa. So in these couple of years, they are having a better quality of about Moa. So yeah. the only thing that I don't have yet in Crown Reef is uh, like a sustainable picture in the way that people recycling something, uh, I don't know, picture like that's why we hide photographer for those kind of. Pictures. These are more landscape pictures, people having fun around. Well, and I would also add that I think this is like we're not when we're not looking for something very particular and we just need content. Uh, this is a great resource. And Melissa you know, shared this is cheaper than a photographer. And I, I should say that we're not using this in lieu of local talent and artist work. We do have if you look farther down the budget, which we'll get to. Um, we're trying to increase the amount of work um, and local talent that we're contracting with to get that kind of next level tier of quality and of specific um, types of things we're looking for, special event content that we can use, um, videos that are kind of tailor-made for campaigns for social um, and, you know, uh, collateral that is of the level that can be used for advertisements. Uh, Do we have any rules? For use or not use, are there certain kinds of pictures that are written or unwritten that we're allowed to use or not use? There are certain types of recreating that we don't like that we don't want to use those pictures. Are we posting those pictures? Uh, I don't have any policies like that to, that I'm aware of. Um, cool. Uh, I think I think I captured them. Were there any questions on the sub sub items there? There's a couple. There's a couple kind of small ones in there. I have to explain. Let me get back up here. So yeah, there's the, the basically the crowd rip contract adjustment. Um, the adjustments to the wander maps. Um, we had some twenty two hundred dollars in costs that were basically Robert uh, utilizes for website management program updating that hadn't been captured anywhere in the budget up to this point. So I wanted to make sure that for everything we're expecting to pay out or that's essential to our organization that it's budgeted. Um, so that's that's that category. And apologies for the, the mistake here for those two numbers. The spreadsheets is is correct. Moving on, memberships. Um, adding two memberships. Um, 
National Tour Association, which is a bus tour group. Do you want to speak to that, Melissa? Well, we're, um, this year we decided not to do it uh, because of the budget reason, but then we got increased. I was talking with the youth office of tourism, and we said, Lisa, and now you have the reservation, uh, the Arches reservation, and we have more tour passes coming more. So why you don't have the membership with the, uh, the ATA? And I said, oh, well, if I have the possibility to do that and they increase my budget, why not? So this is a membership that we had that we had that for a long, long time ago, and then because of budget, we decided to cut them. We have the opportunity again to recover them. Yeah. But yeah. And same with uh leave no trace. Uh this is big part of it. It's a bit, uh, all the all the DMOs are part of this year. We need to participate. Something that we need to participate. Any questions on that? Cool. Okay, staff engagements. This is another line item that got moved over from the economic diversification category. Um, this is, is basically gives us budget for if we're doing staff appreciation, if we're um, doing a team lunch, if we're doing um, stuff of that nature that we don't just have like a random discretionary fund, which we can't have, um, and that's being clear how much money we can spend on stuff like that. Um, uh, we also have, um, so for the responsible recreation advertising line, um, I added this in to reflect the discussion that happened kind of between this body and the county commission with regards to that increased summer um, campaign budget. Um, uh, Travel Council Board recommended that $300,000 campaign, the county commission with Mary's motion um, recommended a 250 um, campaign. There was some back and forth between folks who wanted a $200,000 campaign and folks who wanted the $300,000 campaign. And, and Mary's motion kind of offered a compromise of, okay, let's do 250 towards the summer campaign and hold 50 for some responsible recreation campaign to yet to be decided. Um, and so this is where I kind of captured that Fifty thousand dollars in the in the budget um, to reflect that discussion. So it's not dedicated towards anything specific use at this point, but I wanted to make sure that that was caught. Any questions on that? Yeah. All right, cell phone allowance. So um, because we all as staff use our cell phones for work, um, the county has a policy that allows reimbursement for that on our payroll. Um, this was also general office costs that was put on the economic diversification side of the budget and brought on the tourism side of the budget. Um, on the under community engagement, um, so there's two pieces here. Um, one straightforward is we had a budget line to cover community event costs, such as workshops, public meetings, things that we're doing in the community that might require us to book, buy food or book space um, to do kind of community engagement. That $5,000 was in the economic diversification half, we brought it over. The bigger piece here is um, all of the special event grants, we already went through that process this year, we gave out 67,500 total. Um, uh, we're given in the form of the community event grant. Um, and so uh, for this budget amendment, I zeroed out the special event grant line um, and transferred all of those costs into the community event side of things. So all of the event grants um, that were approved at the past couple meetings are accounted for under this account. Um, and that was mostly because there was a smaller match requirement for the um, recipients of those grants. And uh, the commission, the commission administration felt that since we had taken kind of a long time to get those out the door, that was the best way to go with those programs. Um, does that make sense? I'm confused because it seems like those events should have been covered with the budgeted amount that would have been taken care of for the first six months. So we're transferring expenses to which community is it? So there's two lines. If you look at account number uh, 16, 40, 20, 8, 20, special event grant. There was originally about 40,000 for that. You seen that? Mm -hmm. And then under community engagement, one of the sub items is the community event grant. So that would be 48, 20, 600, so a couple lines up. Um, that was originally budgeted for 40,000. So the total budget for both community and special event grants was $80,000 this year. The, the Travel Council Board recommended and the County Commission approved 67,500 of that. 
um, and uh, elected not to um, kind of allocate that final 12.5, if that makes sense. So, so all of the grants that were given out are gonna be captured in that community engagement um, line. Um, and uh, the, the next one, well, maybe it's not the next one, but in a minute, the county fair got funded in a separate line item. Uh, for, for, for 50. So basically that 12.5 that didn't get spent in this year's budget will be spent somewhere else uh, in the budget this year during this budget budget process. Is that clear? Clear enough? Clear, clear enough for, for today's purposes? Um, inventory, so this is um, basically office supplies, costs um, for a department. I believe inventory specifically is computer. Uh, yeah, it'd be like non-consumable items that are individually less than $5,000. Yeah, okay. So again, this was budgeted on the other side of the budget, had to bring it over to the side of the budget. Um, we wanted to update the MIC contribution budget because it did not reflect originally the contract of the Senate at the end of 2022. Um, and we also had had discussion with, with Sharon at the last meeting. Um, we had con originally considered um, $5,000 on top of kind of the typical um, uses of the, or the or, uh, deliverables from the MIC to us as a county in that contract to do some tech upgrades to help facilitate um, the booking of the time entry um, reservations and the watching of the OHB, it's OHB. Yeah, yeah, the OHB video. And then it sounded like that. it wasn't a use. So anyway, we just kind of absorbed that and zeroed that line out um, specifically. So you can see under 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 eight four sixteen forty eight twenty eight ten, um, basically the the two pieces of the new contract. The new contract captures the contract, and the bathroom hours extension, which is usually part of the contract, is zeroed out, and the MIC program technology upgrades is zeroed out. So that net change is five thousand three seventy five. We talked about the special events grant change. Um, county fair, we talked about that. So the county commission approved the fifty thousand dollars county fair, which is going to happen. Which I'm really excited about. And Angie is super stoked on. It's the first time in two decades apparently that we've had a county fair. Um, a big one. A big one, starting in two weeks. Not this weekend, but next weekend. All the way running through July fourth. Um, Moab grant um, zeroed out this program. I uh, explained this kind of last time, but we had relatively low engagement in this program last year. And given that we're kind of currently understaffed when it comes to developing new business oriented programs, um, it was unlikely that we'll develop that program this year. Doesn't mean that we won't do something like that in the future. Doesn't mean that the planning process won't recommend some kind of entrepreneurial support for tourism businesses, but not in for this particular line item for this particular year. Any questions on that? I'm gonna sorry, I'm gonna go back to this yeah, special okay. event just real quick. For sure. Does that mean which one? That, uh, so the community events and special that we combine. Yep. Does that mean that that money has not been allocated out yet? Uh, what do you mean it, by allocated? Like, allocated. Has it been given? I don't know. Has it been given? What do we do? Yeah. So <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because in my mind, and I know I'm wrong, it seems like it's being budgeted in the first half of the year and the second half here. So, so I great question. So at the last <laughs> meeting, and I could pull this document up, that'd be useful. Uh, it, we talked about all the money that had been given, which was 67,500 to a number of organizations. Yeah. The 12, five bit that we weren't going to get out. Yeah. Um, and then the way that the program has run year after year is that we start the application window at the end of the summer for the following budget year, because people are planning their events ahead of time. So it's actually not in this budget year, but that process starts at the end of the summer. This year, um, the county is getting a new special, well, not this year, next week, the county is getting a new special event permit person. And that person is going to not only do the permitting, but also these event grant stuff. And so when they come on board, they're gonna be caught up on how this program has run in the past, how it's worked well, how it's worked not so well. And then it would kind of be their charge to start that process. Um, and make sure the child account support is aware and involved because they have been the ones that we approved, right? Well, the ones that have been approved have been um, everything that needs to happen from the decision making standpoint from the county commission has already happened. So everything else is between our office and the clerk's office, making sure the grant contracts are signed, um, getting those 
grant checks to the recipients of the of the, um, the grants and doing the follow up and the reporting and, and all that kind of stuff. So basically, from a budget standpoint, done invested. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I think so. Okay. Do you have a question? No, I just love it that you said there's a follow up process. Yep. And so just help me understand where I can see that. So, um, probably the best way to look at it is in the grant contracts, which were in the kind of commission hack. And I can probably I can follow up if you send me like an email separately. Sure. sure. I can send you a sample contract with the you know, details for check and say here's what the reporting requirements are in the contract. Thanks. So, yeah, happy to do that. But if you don't send me the email, I will forget. I that's right. That's okay. on. <laughs> or I can ask the guy, the guy to remind me. That's that's guy's job now. <laughs> Part of it. I don't mean to reduce your role. Um. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Right. You You're great. Okay. So then, data. This increase we already have talked about extensively. So if there's no no follow up, I'm just gonna go right okay. to that. Sorry to be a pain here. Be a but pain. In the previous stuff that I had sort of been diving into over the weekend, I see so much budget for data that seems to be duplicated. Okay. And I'm hoping that it's just not. And like it looks like we're um, contracting for data collection from USU, um, from Wayne, somebody, Wayne State or something. And I'm hoping that what we're doing with Loves is going to be overarching and getting all that. And we won't have to spend that money with those places. So we are not spending money. And then we can put money towards cooler stuff. For sure. Yeah. So maybe I can capture all of the lines and make sure that we're on the same page was going towards it. So if you go up to professional services, it's just 310. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think might be on the front page. Uh, second. second page. Uh, there is, well, I think people online aren't seeing it, but um, there's data insight management for 30 grand. That's four, four lines down from total. So that thirty thousand dollar cost okay. is that is that is contract time that is in Love's budget to actually have Adam spend his time out of his limited schedule, and we are buying his time so that he can help us put together all the best sources, develop the contract. So that's what that is. the The visitation research, which is Wayne USU, has not been expended yet. Um, so the intention between putting that in the budget was. We have all of these indicators of visitation, but no one true number. We have highway data, we have Arches National Park visitation, we have all these different places, but wouldn't it be useful to have one true number that said how many people came? And so the intention there was not necessarily to work with Wayne, but that was part of the conversation, but to figure out, can we do a, can we develop a model of visitation that uses all these inputs that we're buying, so that we can have one true, one, well, there's no true, but a model of visitation that's a one single number. So that hasn't been contracted yet, but I, but that's to me distinct from these other projects and valuable. So that's distinct from what Love's um, scope will Correct. be. Yeah. And so this isn't, that is not contracted with anybody yet. That's kind of. Will that anyway. also be data that, like the love data that we as business owners and as community members will have access to, to try to wrap our heads into. To... So, so the vision of that would be, you have to do the data science and the behind the scenes to figure out, you know, all of the different inputs that we have access to, and turning that into one useful visitation number, and then putting that modeled number as a part of the public dashboard. So even the parks could use that. Some sure. other public good. Yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, this is all going to be public good. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So I mean, so for me, that kind of research would also allow us to figure out, you know, what is the leading driver of visitation. If you take all of these multi multiple variables, maybe it's just weather. Maybe it's gas prices. Um, if you build an, a, a a to use my kind of term, a multivariable regression, you can look at each of the variables and see how it affects. So that's something that we're working on, but hasn't been contracted yet. And then the USU one is where? That that is that one. Last the year, same as Wayne USU. Yeah, last budget. year in the 2022 budget, we contracted with um, Wayne's department to do an evaluation of the Trail Ambassador Program and to summarize all of these visitor use management surveys that are being done at the various land management units and to provide policy briefs to this department and to the county at large. 
that hasn't been completed yet, uh, but we're contracted with them. So that's up from them. Wayne's inside that. Part. And you, yeah. Wayne's what? He's, 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 no, <laughs> not here. he's not here. Yeah. Oh, um, but you expect that those results will be coming some the data analysis that we've paid for. We will come back to this board for sure. Yeah. So we haven't, we have no results that we're like hiding from that. We just don't have, that hasn't come back yet. Um, and then the last one that I think is relevant specifically is the visitor slash resident survey. So that $25,000 line in that same category. Um, and I think this will, we're figuring out how to incorporate this into our planning, but under having a kind of an ongoing understanding of unbiased visitor perceptions of our area to help us do planning. Um, what is our resident sentiment and what is the business sentiment? Um, so this only covers those two, but that's that's what would be the cost to actually create our own data set of what do people think, right? And so, um, so there's the cost to actually do the data consulting and help us do that work and do the reporting. There's creation of additional data resources, modeling of the visitation number, and then the actual cost, hard cost to go buy all that stuff. Um, and I, I think that's all of the all of the pieces that are in the budget, unless I'm missing something. So I hope that that is illustrative of um, how I don't think it's duplicative, but I'd be happy to if I'm missing something. No, it explains a lot. Thank cool. you. Yeah, for sure. So that's to change the data is what was approved at the last meeting or recommended in the kind of group and being implemented now. Um, on paid media, we talked about this last time. Also, um, that increase of the $150,000 for the summer campaign is incorporated into there. There's also the increased burden on um, our side of the match for the co-op fly market campaign that we just got the report on earlier today. Um, and because of the grant board changes that I discussed at the last meeting, um, where we underspent in the past um, due to COVID, uh, now um, we're basically not getting that money now. That's how it works because we're getting balanced on the books of these offices on from their grant giving stuff. So I wanted to make sure that we are planning accordingly for that change. Um, we had some discussion over that last time. Maybe we probably could dive deeper if people have more questions, but. Um, I'm curious about the accountability. That's just a mess up. We just messed up. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I wasn't here at the time when that happened. In 2020. Kind of well, I mean, we couldn't have it back in 2020, so I don't know. But we had two years after that, we could have used that money had we been on our game. And we clearly weren't. Yeah. And, you know, I, I can personally own that. It's been a big uphill learning curve about the co-op stuff and who managed it and how do we invoice grants. So, like, I'm happy to take at least a measure of responsibility for that. Uh, we'll deduct it out of your picture. Sounds good. <laughs> so is, if you were a business owner, you wouldn't just say, oh, it's $79,000. Oh, well. Right. We you also were. Right. There. Yeah. We also were not notified until this January when the person who was running this program gave us a heads up mm -hmm. that this is how these numbers add up. Yeah. And that's the, there was, there was their solution. So, totally heard. Well, I mean, we've, I feel like as a body, we have accountability. Mm -hmm. Totally. No, I think that's a point well taken. Um, additionally, uh, we've got uh, that the two thousand dollars in unanticipated cost that got moved to cover the Wander Maps contract, as previously discussed, um, and then uh, Melissa requested uh, that additional forty thousand dollars to go towards international marketing uh, projects. Um, that. My understanding was you had a conversation with the state and said, what should this number be? It's more for the coal marketing international uh, uh, campaign that we are doing. We always did yeah. just Canada. And now we want to use them in more to bring international back. So now it's Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And then now I want to do them in UK to them. Yeah. And so when Melissa said co-op, might be confusing with the co grant. It's okay. cooperative. It's OK. It's cooperative in that this is us working with the campaign the state's already doing within the travel trade industry. So this is dollars that is going towards um, basically educating, um, you know, uh, travel advisors, travel agents, uh, doing incentives in that kind of program. So it's not direct to consumer marketing. This is getting the people who are doing the booking on behalf of other travelers to get them in our market. Um, so distinct from the type of marketing we talked about earlier, that's, you know, advertising to my eyeballs and then I go to them. Does that make sense? 
Okay, I'll move on. <clears throat> um, under earned media, increase um, 10,904, same, same notion. This is basically our cost um, when uh, the state is bringing in a social media influencer, a journalist, um, anybody that is going to generate media that we're not necessarily buying, not buying ad space, but they're talking about us in media, right? And so uh, that is typically with regards to helping to pay for someone's hotel, meals, transportation. Um, so this was a, you know, once again, similar, Melissa kind of requested this increase um, and uh, helps us partner with these awesome tours. And we're not necessarily going out of our way to go solicit these folks, but making sure that when the state brings a really high quality person to our area, that we're able to make that a host guy, basically. Um, under owned media, um, the change the, the change as written in the budget um, includes includes kind of zeroing out the the budget categories that were kind of used to to build this in the first place. So those the video content development, social media content development, podcast and written, those were kind of our concepts going into this year. So that we come up with the number. What that has come out to be. Um, is projects with Mark Finley to develop new video content, um, get some new time-lapse content, um, project with two local creators, uh, Max Heimowitz and Tyson, Tyson Swayze to, to shoot some video and photo for us, um, and then also to edit um, some videos that this is the main change here, um, is to capture some additional uh, costs uh, for video edits that will come to the budget. Um, so is this separate from the project you just finished? Um, well, so in the in the in the line item section, there's a handful of these that most of this is that was went through that agenda item that was project that were finished and that we need to edit. There was two videos that were kind of hanging from last year um, that I wasn't aware of. there was costs related to that. So which <clears throat> Okay, so I mean the project that he just and then Andrea Brand's gonna put it on the agenda for next week, but yeah, so some of the editing costs for that, for example, because he's been working on that for but I was gonna expense it out of responsible rec from 147. Okay. Which is um sort of what a lot of that money was intended for. Sure. Yeah. So just so you know. Yeah, I mean happy to move things around. So but it just depends on whether or not. That ten thousand is intended to cover that project or something else. That's what I guess I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. I'm I'm waiting for follow up on Mark on uh, kind of item by item. Okay. But um, all right, yeah, let's follow up on that. Okay. So August Mark Finley does phenomenal footage of landscapes. Any chance he might be able to highlight some restaurants that we were proud of? That's a great order? question. So the Business project we're going to do with Max possibly be highlighted as part of our cool community coffee shops. We have so many cool things. Yeah. So so the project that's here is the Max Heinowitz project. The the point the notion there is to highlight our local business community and basically do a social media campaign that's selecting a handful, doing a social media forward um, kind of little piece of a video series, do a portrait series and put that on our Discover web page because you need people who do different stuff. And you're right, Mark doesn't really do that. He really has a good house. Great question. Yeah, so we're working on getting that contract started. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep moving. Uh, travel trade shows, we've got um, an increase in 4,750. Um, so that's basically increased cost for each IPW, Go West and IITA. That Melissa is seeing as she's booking and doing these things. Inflation, right? So we talked. Inflation is a part of it. I mean, mm -hmm. what would you say these costs are? It's inflation, and yeah. Um, same for international sales missions. Um, currently going to went to Canada. Are going to Switzerland and Austria. Mm -hmm. Um, this probably doesn't need to be in this whole account, but there's a small cost um, attributed towards printing some. Info boards on Arch's time entry in several languages at both the airport and the MIC. Um, and then um, ultimately had a had a negative balance 
after putting all of this in of uh, uh, 5,388 and took that out of website costs that we were planning to help develop a steward module, kind of flexible money um, that we could potentially just push to next year. And um, so that's right to come the other day. But all of those costs end up to a net change of an increase of 481,169 and 80 cents uh, as our forecasts look like. So um, if there's no, I guess, last kind of opportunity for questions or recommendations or a discussion on this. Um, the, the, yeah, the website, yeah, exactly. The spreadsheet that's on the agenda um, is, is uh, and we'll make sure that that's in the packet. I just want to say that two hundred dollars you spent on those posters. Yeah. Well, well, money well spent. Um, so, I kind of liked what Chris said about putting the you know some of those videos and whatnot in the responsible record, and especially where we have that kind of like additional fifty thousand that we don't know what we're doing with, and then maybe some of this on the media or some of that money or whatever could go to some more business specific spotlights. Yeah, I that's a great idea. I was just going to say, despite what's going to happen with the Boat Commission and whether it moves to the foundation or not, there's nothing added in here for the Boat Commission. And I think at that public hearing, it was very loud that there needs to be more resources allocated to that. And should that not happen, we're missing out here. I mean, it was clearly stated that the website needs to be updated better. Clearly, Vegan needs to get out and network more. And none of that's reflected in this. Well, so, can you guys partner with us on that? Yeah, but I'm saying if it doesn't happen, right? It's not there needs to be a plan B. Yeah. Right? So right. well, this is the well the, the issue that we have is statutory actually. And so we've got so there's a tourism promotion, which is really unrestricted. Which is what we just talked about. Yeah. And, and then everything. separately in statute, there's uh promotion establishment of recreation film and conventions. And oh. that's limited to no more than one fifth of the total 37% of the TRT. We've already maxed that budget out at one fifth. And so oh, even with yeah. the amount that needs to go back into tourism, that's maxed out. Well, see, the tourism part doesn't affect that at all. Yeah. Because we're already maxed out at the one fifth. We're, you know, as much as we can go on the one fifth. And so what that means is that, you know, the other components that are in that budget, which would be like new sports programming for um, through the rec district, uh, responsible rec program, trail ambassadors, those would have to get cut to increase the film budget because we're maxed out statutorily on those things. Okay. And where is that? I mean, I've looked for that. I can't find that amount, like you, that percentage. Uh, in statute? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can <clears throat> give you a reference here in a second. Well, maybe we do that offline follow. No, yeah. I'll, I'll, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to like right now. I would just like to see it. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was a good question. Um, and so, yeah, operationally, there's those three big buckets within the R corner of TRT. Mm -hmm. And everything that would be coming out of the economic diversification is what's moving over. So there's no change into that rec film and conventions tier. That makes sense. Um, I think that. And then it came out there most of the way. Yeah. So, you know, again, I, I'm not, I don't, the, the question of could money out of this establishing promote tourism category be used towards film production activities? The question I don't have the answer to. So if, if you know, the Travel Council Board wanted to do more film-based investment, maybe, maybe it can't go to like the direct operations of the film commission, but could you like a you know, special film, film tours and thing or special events. Yeah, those mm -hmm. kinds of places that supports yeah. kind of film as a subset of our tourism strategy, um, but not directly funding the film commission would be my guess. I mean, one place to look, I guess, would be how how is St. George offering that if they're doing yeah. it through their tiers or they're doing it somehow. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, yeah, and, and is it more right, than that one of it? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's because I already did. Yeah. Okay. So you have the yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. We're not ready. Yeah. Point well taken. Yeah, it's just, I keep saying that, but I, I really do hear you there. Um, so as we develop our 2024 budget, um, which will then consume the rest of our year, um, think. You know, I, I think I'm open to thinking creatively about ways to 
put in various tourism projects into the establishment and not part of the budget. Um, if it's statutorily restricted that we can't spend um, those funds towards the film commission. I mean, if activities. nothing else, but the, the, all the anniversaries that are going to be happening next year. Yeah, I think it's a perfect it example. Be built into the budget for next year. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah, so let's plan on that. So, yeah. This is fine. Thank you. Yeah, that's the right yeah. Amending the budget for this year is probably not going to make this happen, but looking forward into 2024, how do we put in a request for a budget item? For example, I feel it's so important to let the public know where these dollars are being spent. I and mean, you've heard me say this before. How is our community benefiting? And Chris is here, he's the expert on this, but the revenue that restaurants collect and so many businesses in that TRCCA that alleviates a little bit of pressure off that general fund. Mm. So we don't have to raise property taxes. I would love the community to feel that they get some benefit from the burden and the negative externalities that are coming their way because they can't turn left in May. Sure. I want them to know the benefits that are coming by sharing their community. But if they don't understand that, they're just going to be angry. Sure. And I, I'm tired of everybody being angry. Of, they're biting the hand that's feeding them. Mm -hmm. And if we can put in a budget item so that we can maybe find a way to communicate that mm -hmm. to the public through um, some sort of signage, some sort of notice and awareness paid for by this, yeah. I feel like maybe the tempo could just, just come down a bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that we could put together, we have to generate a report every year on how we spend the money and what it goes to, although it's not <clears throat> the most digestible probably for the general public, but we could like, you know, put it into a slideshow and present it or, you know, just make some PDFs out of it. Like the TRCC, which is the restaurant car rental tax. I mean, that one's pretty simple. Most of it goes to uh, funding Old Smash Trail Arena and the Grand Center. Uh, the lion's share of it. Um, the TRT is obviously much more complicated. And then, you know, the benefits of the TRT uh, would be realized through the data programs that we're contracting for. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, for instance, uh, any reports that the Film Commission would generate you know, from there and so we have all this data showing uh, economic benefit, you know, certainly on that side of things. Yeah, but I, but I think in terms of activating that recommendation, I think there's two venues to do that, it should be the 2024 budget planning process, it's going to start in August, so when I have to get an initial um, pile of new numbers to Chris, um, by no means the final one, but that'll, you know, this board will be involved in that process. And then secondarily is this, is this, you know, very broad planning exercise that we're going to be doing, um, uh, in which we're going to talk about all this kind of stuff. Um, so I think both would be a good place to capture that. Um, I think you're right. Um, you know, trying to figure out how to put that into today's space. It's, uh, it's, it's a hard one. Yeah. I remember Elaine at, oh, at least three or four, a plate time that she met once at the library to explain to people what was going on. She met once at the uh, mark and once at the you know at the senior center. I mean it's and, and but, there's but been a lot of articles in the paper and it's hard to get people to hear it. Yeah. It's hard. We got to, that would be really nice if we could figure out a creative way for them to hear the information. Seems like you have to like you're going to advertise to our locals. Totally. Right. That's yeah. exactly so what it is. Say we have like this visitor education. Um, we need like a community education. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Sorry, yeah, a hard time. Yeah. And believe it or not. Yeah. Um, Should we uh, follow them? You got to go. Yeah, just got that. I'll get it. Yeah. Uh, oh, you can uh, yeah, I have bread to look at. Um, sorry, I have to adjourn. Do you, well, do you want to call voted for recommendation of the budget then? So we can get that done with and we can we can follow up on this conversation. They make a motion that we recommend the changes in the budget in the 20 is this 2024 2023 budget um with the changes that were explained to us today. Is there any other discourse? A motion from Sharon. I have a subject from Alex. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none. 
I will call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Close. Um, Jenny, can we get close? Was that all in favor? Anyone opposed? Okay. Anyone opposed? Was okay. there any abstain? I didn't, I didn't. Any abstain? No. Okay. All right. And I'd like to adjourn this meeting. Okay. Um, and then Brian, this sheet was from I think September. I have it from like the budget, and I just listed like.